Hey, it's Juan Valdez again on a coffee binge. I'm burning the midnight oil on this one. Saving uh, details and um, we're using details from other files. Um, before we get into that, I just wanted to discuss real quick about um, what to model and, and what to make into a detail component so you don't waste time. When wondering what to model or what to make into a detail component, ask yourself the following questions. Will I see or use this in other views in the project? Will it affect other aspects of the project, like material takeoffs? How large is it? Our office tends to use 2D detailing for details inch and a half, 40 millimeters or smaller. There's no limit to how much information you can place in a detail component. If you will be seeing similar conditions throughout the model, put in as much as you can. You can use detail components at every scale within the model, so it is a great way to draw the information only once. If the lines describing small components seem to merge when printed, there's a little point in showing that that geometry at that scale you might consider making the model simpler. Just a uh, bit manager's note. We're using details from other files. As you develop details of common building features, you will likely find the need to reuse this content in future projects. You might even have an existing library of details that were created in the CAD application. In either situation, there are tools and commands available in Revit software to allow you to maximize the usage of the material you produce over time. Using CAD details, it is quite common to have details that were originally created in CAD programs. Sometimes these are details taken from a manufacturer's website, and sometimes they can be details drawn in other projects uh, or from an office library, and you simply want to reuse them in your project rather than recreate them. Regardless of where they originated, you have the ability to work with 2D elements and import them or link them into the model for use in your project. In Chapter 7, Interoperability, Working Multi-Platform, we provide detailed guidance on using linked DRG files for the basis of project details. Now, another BIM project manager note. At times in the project, your workflow will necessitate using 2D information from a past project, a manufacturer's library, or other resource in your current Revit project to optimize this performance of your imported CAD files within your model. We recommend that you take some steps to prepare the CAD files before import. Here are some general tips to make your import process uh, to help uh, your import process. If the file you'd like to import contains hatches or annotations, delete them before importing and use filled regions and the Revit text or keynote tool for annotations. This will help keep your graphics consistent in the case of hatch and allow you to edit the verbiage and location of any notes. And, and that's delete all the hashes and annotations and they're saying that because uh, in these CAD files these true type fonts and these uh, shape fonts these SHG, the SHX files these font files they uh, sometimes don't uh, come in as intended um, so it's saying that in, in some instances you may have to re-annotate some of these details now it's not always the case, but let's just read further. Import only one detail at a time so you can take better advantage of the software's ability to manage your sheet referencing. If you have a series of details organized in a single CAD file that you want to use in documenting your project, isolate each detail, save it as a separate file, and then import it. Make sure you import the CAD details using the Revit line weights, colors, and styles. Check your CAD file before importing it into your Revit project to make sure it is consistent with your office standards. If the imported geometry is something you really want or need to edit, it's better for your model and overall file size to import the CAD file into a detail component if it is 2D and exploded, and edit it in the family editor. This way, when you import it into your project file, it's still a single object rather than thousands. Revit software doesn't allow line segments shorter than inch, uh, 1 of an inch or 8 tenths of a millimeter. Although this is seemingly a very small line, many manufacturer details have small segment lines in them. When CAD details are exploded, they, those short lines will be deleted and can leave your line work looking incomplete. For additional tips on leveraging CAD data, refer to Appendix B, Tips, trip, Tricks, and Troubleshooting, which we're going to get to eventually. Using details from other Revit projects. As we begin to discuss the reuse of detailing content, we must return to the three methodologies included 
introduced at the beginning of this chapter, standalone detailing, hybrid detailing, and modeling detailing, beginner, intermediate, advanced. And we just did the advanced with the mullion nested within that family, the, the, the mullion family nested within the mullion uh, family, the mullion detail, 2D detail component. As you approach a project with more detailed modeling, you will reduce the amount of drafting needed in the project environment. However, you will be less able to reuse content as standard details or detailed templates. This is because the best way to reuse 2D content is with drafting views. There's an app for that. If you have many details in DWG format that you'd like to quickly import to a project file, a few add-ins are available to automate the process. One example is the detail link tool that is part of the Revit Express tool suite that CAD Technology Center developed. This tool allows you to select multiple DWG files and import each one of its own to its own drafting view in Revit. You can learn more about the detail link at www.cadtechnologycenter.com and at the Autodesk Apps Exchange, which may, be, may redirect you, um, apps.exchange.autodesk.com. Now, saving a single detail, and this is from Revit, to reutilize in other projects or other uh, views. Drafting views, detail views. If you are working in a detail view of the model or a drafting view, you can save all the 2D elements to an external file or reuse in other other projects. In the case of a single 2D detail, it can be quick work to get the file from one project to the next. Open the file with the detail you'd like to collect and activate the view in which this detail appears. Select all the 2D geometry and annotation within the drafting view and create a group using the Create Group button on the contextual tab of the ribbon. Note that if you are in a call-out or detail view in which model elements are displayed, two groups will be created, a model group and a detail group. Given, uh, give the group a name, making sure the name is unique enough to over, not to overlap with any view names in your current project or the project you're going to import into. Like in this case, section or curtain wall. Don't say this as section or curtain wall if you're going to, let's say you export this out, save it out, and you have a project that just so happens to have the same view name, section at curtain wall, don't name the uh, RVT the same name as the view you're going to be bringing it into. If the, you know, just not going to work. Uh, so, with the detail group grouped and named, expand the groups node in the project browser now. Expand the detail group node and find the group you just created. Right click the group and save and choose Save Group from the Context menu. As part of the Save as process, you'll get exhausted. <laughs> you'll get exhausted. You'll get the Save Group dialog box. This will allow you to create a separate RVT file for your group, basically a standalone project file. Save the group in a location where you'll be able to find it again and close your project file. There's no need to name the group because the new file will reflect the group name. All right, so what is that saying? That's saying, well, in this view, in section at curtain wall, it won't work for a call out. It'll only work for a section or a drafting view. So I was to grab this within the context of grabbing it. Make sure I get it all. You'll see within the context, create group pops up. It creates a group of elements for easy reuse. You use groups when you plan to repeat layouts many times in a project or a family. And that goes not just for the one that you're in. Revit does not allow grouping of some of the selected elements. These elements will not be included in the group. If you expand this, it's going to tell you it's not going to copy the callout head one in one. Attach detail groups, group one, group one ID, section and curtain wall call out one ID. That's not coming with this. So now let's just call this um, group one. Actually, let's just call this, um, uh, what's a good name for this one? Make it unique. Not overlap with any of you names in your current project. This will be, uh, I don't want to, wall section is a, uh, a very loose term that may be confusing. So what I would then, I would give this a prefix if it was me. G, it is me. If I was talking to my digital twin, I would tell him the same thing. G. And then I would say uh, G section. And then curtain wall. And what do they call this? This uh, what was this manufacturer? Cornier. Cornier. Cornier is the manufacturer for the curtain wall. 
And I hit OK. It was synced for a second, and boom, model group, G section, curtain wall cornea was created. Reference level one, origin level offset. And if you look in the project browser, you can't see it's behind my head. So I can, I can, I can collapse all this. All right, so I'm going to collapse everything up to uh, groups. And you can see, just like it said, oh, I did this twice. I don't want you to see, I didn't want you to see this. Okay, so it creates two groups. Just disregards this one. I can't, I can't get rid of it. Um, can I get rid of it here? No, I can't get rid of it. I did this twice to make sure I got it right. Well, this is the group it created. Now, it said it's going to create two groups, right? It's going to create a detail group, and it's going to create a, uh, a model group. Now, again, when you expand this directory tree all the way to its end, that is where you're going to get the option to save it out. Save group, right? Save group. Now, same as group name, same as group name is what it's defaulting to. Now, this is what it said in the text. There is no need to name the group because the new file will reflect the group name. Well, we're, we're going we're to take a look at that. Group name, group to save, model group one, right? Well, that's not what I called it. I called it model group G section curtain wall corner, same as group name. So we're going to see. I'm going to just bring this to my uh, desktop. Well, no, I'm going to bring it to the root directory of the uh, library. I'm going, to, I'm going to, oops, shoot. I'm not going to do that because I just did it wrong. Save as, save group. I'm bringing it to the root directory of the uh, library and leave the settings intact and hit save. Just so that it's a, in, in a good place. And this is where you're going to need to confer with your network folks and, and just with your team and discuss where it is you're going to put it. Uh, group one, you want to replace it? Well, now it just, uh, it's going to overwrite group one. Well, it is what it is. So hold that thought for a second. All right, so, um, yeah, we're still in a project browser. We, we still um, haven't seen that group that was created, but it has been created. So let's just, uh, let me open a new project for a second. File, new, project, architectural, template. Okay, oops, okay. Okay, so um, there's a, 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 an example coming down the road. We're going to inst insert another file, but what I wanted to show you is that um, if we were to uh, create a drafting view, let's go to view, see if it works this way. Create a drafting view. It's called drafting one at inch and a half. And it's going to create it right there. Let's we're at it now. If I was to go to uh, insert, and I'll just go to um, I can't do it from here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Insert from file. Here it is. Insert views from file. Copy specific sheet schedules the drafting views from a project file and saves them to the current project. Um, I believe this is what I'm looking for. Hold on. Let me just make sure I got this right. To the root directory. Uh, group one. RVT. Is this the one? Is this going to give it to us? Mm, if you use the concerns to another project, this isn't working the way I intended it. Hold on. Um, I'm supposed to actually make this now. I'm supposed to demonstrate this happening, but it's not coming into uh, this particular new project. Hold on. It's, be it's because of the drafting view? No. Um, uh, could I bring it to level one? That would make no sense. It, I could bring it. Well, what kind of a drafting view? Um, hold on. Hold that thought. Wait a second. It's a group, right? It's a group. Load is group. Imperial. Group one. See if it can as a group. Let's just see here. The following types are exist for a different. Let's hit OK for a second. Let's see if it can here for a second. Hold on. Groups. Detail. Model. Group one. Cancel. It should have brought in the actual view. Mm, I'm not seeing it. Hold on. Maybe I made a mistake. Let me adjust the parameters. I really don't want to have to redo this video. God forbid I have to redo this video. Just bear with me. It's, uh, it's very, uh, you have to have the patience of a saint. 
this will allow you to create a separate RVT file for your group, basically a standalone project file. Save the group in a location where you'll be able to find it again and close your project file. There's no need to name the group because will, the new file will reflect the group name. Well, I want to reinsert it um, as a Revit file. So uh, if you want to call out a detailed view of the model elements it's displayed, well, I can open it, file open it, but that's ridiculous. There's no reason to have to copy and paste something. Um, insert from file didn't seem to want to work. Insert 2D elements from file, that's not going to give it to us because when, we, when I exported this, um, I did indeed see this, um, this group and all of its uh, associated views when it was created. So um, I don't think that um, doing that would be the, uh, the right way to do it. When I created this group, I, uh, I saw it create a bunch of uh, files when I opened it. So I mean, I could open it and show you what I mean. Let me open it and show you. You'll see it was created, and you'll see that it did indeed take a few things with it. It took the structural plans levels, the floor plans, the 3D levels, the sections, and sure enough, that is where the detail is. It didn't grab the call out, right? But there it is. It took in a portion of the model that was visible in the view as a 3D element, plus all the 2D embellishment, right? And it basically not well, saved it out. But now we got to get it back in, right? we got to get it back in. So um, saying that I could, you know, select it, copy and paste it isn't the way to do it, right? But let's just see here. Let's go back to, let's just close some of the views that, uh, that we're in so that we have only the group one RVT open and then the actual, uh, this is the new project three I opened up. Now this is the uh, section of curtain wall uh, sample building project that I actually extracted that detail uh, slash model group from and created it that way. So here's the new level. Now, load as group. Loads of Revit files are group. Well, you can create a group of elements and place that group many times in a project or family. You can load an RVT file into a project as a group, but that's not allowing, that's not what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to see, there's the link RVT, and then there's, um, it's one way of doing it, but we're not going to bring in this detail on, um, on level one. If I can link it to a drafting view, which I can't. Um, so we're going to create a, uh, a, a detail view, a section detail, and bring that in. Well, it could very well be, because I did see something that uh, may indeed allow us to do that. So let me go over here to view. Let's go to section view. Let's create a section. Oops. Um, that's, wait, hold on a second. I did it in a drafting view. Hold on a second. Let me get out of this view. Let me go to the first floor level right here. Okay, let me go to uh, uh, section view. Let's create a section. And then let's go to that section. Now let me go to insert. Let me see if I can do it this way. Let's go to insert. It doesn't give you any option to bring it back in. It doesn't tell you. Link Revit. Group 1. Link. The link cannot be reloaded because it's loaded into another open document. Okay, that's because it's open. Let me close it. Link Revit. <laughs> group 1. Open. Well, it came in. It didn't give me much more than the link. Group 1. And that's not giving me what it is that I want. I want to see the view. Section 1. No, that's not the view. See, what isn't happening is the section view isn't coming right in. So there is, uh, as much as they explain how to get it out, they don't explain how to get it back in. Let me just see if down the road, um, choose the detail group from the insert 2D elements dialog box. That's what's saying in the next exercise where it's already been created, because it says, we have created a sample file using this method for use in the remainder of this exercise. Make sure you download the C17 Jam Detail Revit from the book's companion webpage. Continue with the sample building project file saved from the previous exercises in this chapter. From the View tab, click Drafting View to create a new view name named Jam Detail. The scale does not matter because it will inherit the scale of the imported detail. From the Insert tab of the ribbon, choose Insert from File and then Insert 2D Elements from File. 
Okay, well, that's, I tried that before. They really need to get a very good, uh, I think a, uh, I think it didn't work. Insert 2D elements from file. So let's go back and see if I can get it to work on this one now. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I am not in the library. Library root, root one. Let's see what I get now. Did I get an error? Section group one. Well, there it is. Okay, so it was explained in the next paragraph using a different example. Now, isn't that just ridiculous? Why would it use a different example after it gave us an example? <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I'd complain, but who would listen? Well, if you see here, um, I'm afraid to put it in because it looks like it's already there. Now, that really doesn't show much other than a section view. Right? That, that's really not too, uh, too intuitive. Well, that's what we created. I don't necessarily see, I see the link. Let me, uh, let me get rid of this link for a second. Yeah, well, I inserted it, but I sure don't see it in this section. Well, did I do it in section one? Maybe that's why. Let me do it in the drafting view. Well, I did it in the drafting view, and this is it. That's it. That's not what it's supposed to look like. Section of curtain. Well, that's from the project. That's the drafting view created in the project three. Insert from... Uh, it, didn't, it didn't do what it said it was supposed to do. I'll try it again. But it sure didn't do what it said it was going to do. Libraries, group one. Is there anything that I'm missing here? Select a view which contains 2D view specific elements. These elements will be placed in the current view and on the clipboard. Transfer view scale. I'm going to copy elements from file. Uh, is it because I already did it? So let's just go back and undo it and make sure that I uh, didn't do it wrong. I didn't do it wrong. Close this. Back to level one. I'm going to get rid of this section and do the exact same thing again. Let's see what the next exercise says, and maybe that'll show us some insight. Because I could be spinning my wheels. I'm a little exhausted, but I'll keep going because I want to get as much as I can get done uh, before uh, this COVID-19 phase three, right? Uh, okay, so uh, we'll create a sample file using this method for use in the remainder of this exercise. Make sure you download the C17 Jambell Revit the book companion webpage. So let me, uh, let me close out this new project I created to deliver this or illustrate this point, which I'm not able to illustrate. And let me go to uh, open. Actually, yeah, I can open this from the root directory of D and go to the instructional files and go to C17 detailing. And there's a jam detail. It'll upgrade and we'll take a look here. You see, well, that's it. Now, I don't want to see this, seem to think there's any 3D components in this, so that's okay. But again, it is what it is. Now we have this, and it says, continue with the sample building project file saved in the previous exercise of this chapter, which we still have open, which is here. From the view tab, click drafting view to create a new view named jam detail. So from the uh, view, create a new drafting view named jam detail. Scale does not matter because it will inherit the scale of the imported detail. From the insert table of the ribbon, choose the insert from file and then insert 2D elements from file. Well, it's probably going to work here, right? But it's not going to work um, in the one that we created earlier. And I'm not 100% sure why it didn't work, but I'm just going to go with the flow. Well, here it is if I go up, 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 right there, grab it. Let's see what happens with this. I just grabbed the wrong one. I'm such a goofball. It's not going to come because it's open for starters. So let me close that and let me actually do it again um, before I uh, screw it up. So let's go here, insert here, go to this way, over to here, go to, and I hate when it does this, changes the view type of the dialog box and it spins it upside down. That's not where it goes. Um, 17 detailing, GM detail. Let's open it up. It's going to upgrade. Let's see. Select a view in which contains 2D view specific elements. Won't well, we have the same thing. Oh, wait a second. 
Ah, we didn't put it on a drafting view. We didn't put it on a drafting view. But it said detail or drafting view. Maybe they analyze what happened. We'll see. It was, this detail was created on a drafting view. Exists but a different, the type in which you are uh, bringing in will be used. So let's just, it's going to reuse the arrowheads. Well, it's right there, and then, now it's over here. So in the jam detail, you can see it's going to inherit the scale. Well, that's a bit, well, excuse me. Let's go down. That's even too. Um, it didn't look really, uh, I don't like that text size. There we go. It is? It, it, there was a checkbox for that, inheriting the scale from the detail view, and it said that it was gonna, and it didn't. It did something else. I think it was one and a half, and then the other one was three inch. Well, so there's the detail now, and it's actually selectable and editable and all that, but it didn't do it with the prior exercise, which is a bit irritating. Now, um, yeah, in the open dialog box to navigate, select that, and then bring it in, and um, highlight drafting view, list, and select transfer view scale, checkbox. It did say that. But first it said it's going to inherit the view, and then it said it to actually check it. So click OK to close the dialog box and begin the import. Click anywhere in the drafting view to place the imported elements, and then click the finish button in the ribbon to complete the command. Done. That was a long way to go for it. I apologize if we were into some speed bumps, but you start to see how this... Uh, this will help to a certain extent. So let me just kill this one that went, uh, you know, 20, eh, that's not that bad. All right, so uh, shop till you drop.